Hello. Again. Is that better? I think it's better. It looks better on OBS, so it's probably better. Ah, audio is better. Yeah. I don't know. OBS decided that, you know, it didn't want to work properly. So, well, yes, exactly, Monica. Good evening. Good evening, Big Pot. Good evening, Monica. Good evening, programmer. Uh, yes, I was I was waiting for uh, for Monica to be there to do a proper entrance. <laughs> yeah, some uh, I did I did try to switch. Uh, yes, it is uh, an entrance. I did try to switch, uh, and but it crashed, so I had to stop and start again. But it's working now, and that's what counts. So let's resume. Uh, this stream in which I'm going to show you how I did a Stinger transition for OBS Studio using Natron. So Natron is a compositor. It's the equivalent of um, Adobe After Effects, or kind of. Um, I'm not an expert. I know probably 10% of the software, but enough for me to play with it and do some basic, really basic stuff for this um, Sting your transition. So let's go to the full screen window. There we go. This is Netron. It's a, a another editor. So um, oh, it's not capturing. It's not capturing the, uh, the cursor. So let's capture the cursor. And there we go. So this is the graph part, this is the preview part, and this is the, uh, the properties uh, section of the screen. As I said, this is not a Natron tutorial. I, I, don't, uh, I don't pretend to know Natron enough to do, to do a tutorial. Check online, there are plenty of those, but I'm going to explain every step I do. So how do I, how do we start? Well, the stinger transition I want to do is a a skewed rectangle going uh, through the screen in that direction. Well, I trade three of them uh, going on and, and a, an Ubuntu Mate logo in the middle that is only revealed when the, 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 the rectangles are below um, the logo. So. Let's try with some simple stuff. So we need a rectangle and then we're going to try and position it and make it cross the screen. Right, so I'm going to go here in the Node not Graph um, tab. I'm going to right click and select uh, Draw Rectangle. Right, that's it. That's the end of the stream, thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to move that below so I can have a little bit more room there we go so I have a rectangle nice I cannot I cannot do much with this rectangle uh, so in Netron if you double click on one of those uh, elements here below then you um, pop the property window on top of the, the stack here on this part of the screen that's every object you have in your graph so I double click on rectangle and I have this so you can see I can only uh, change the size and the color, but I can't uh, make it turn. So I'm going to need another node here. I'm going to right click on the rectangle, select transform and then add a transform node. And because I had rectangle selected, the transform, transform node is uh, automatically connected to the rectangle and to the viewer. The viewer is this part is the uh, uh, it's the, the results. So anything that is not connected to the viewer, you don't see it here on this part of the screen. Right. So let's double click on transform one and go in this uh, panel over here. And fir first things we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is change that to 45 degrees. Okay. Now I can use the um, the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and also click the mouse wheel and uh, pan the, uh, the window. Now, I want this to be, to cover the whole 
screen area, which is here. So I'm going to change the scale uh, and I'm going to test some things. So 1.5 is not enough. Two seems to be, yeah, just just enough. Maybe a little bit too much. I if I could have this right on on this uh, corner, I don't need an extra space. Yeah, well, let, let's say two. Two is okay. All right. Right, now I want this thing to move from up there to down here. Okay, so I need to move this. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot something. I'm going to press S on my keyboard to bring the project settings. And I'm gonna check that it's HD 9, 1920 by 1080, that's okay. Uh, 24 FPS, that's not okay. I want 60 frames per second. And I want my stinger transition to be two seconds long. So that's 120 frames. Okay, now we're good. Right, let's click, double click the transform to get back to the transform properties. Okay, so I want this to move this way. So I'm gonna have to translate that. How much? I don't know yet. In what dire direction? I don't know yet. So let's type 100 here and see what it does. Okay, so positive numbers on the x-axis move the thing on the right. And so positive numbers on the y-axis move things up. Okay, I want this thing to be... Uh, oh, what's going on here? Why is it? Ah, I know. Let's double click on the rectangle and click center. Ha, huh. that doesn't change anything. That is weird. Why is it not centered? Oh, the scale, the scale did uncenter it. No, it's already not centered. What is wrong with the, this thing? What's wrong? Hmm. Reset center. Okay. No. No. I did something wrong. There we go. So that's good. The rectangle is centered, but the transform is not centered. Ah, there we go. I don't know what I did, but anyway, rotate 45 degrees. That seems to still be centered. And scale by two, that's still centered. Okay. Right. I need to move this backwards and this upwards. Let's see, uh, minus 1,000 and 1,000 up, 1,000 up. Uh, that's not enough. I want it to be completely over there. So let's go 160, uh, 1,600, 1,600. Yeah, I would like a little bit less. 1500, uh, not enough. Okay, 1550. That's my last word. Yes, 1550. Okay. Right, so it's time to introduce the concept of keyframes. So what is a keyframe? That's a frame where you set some properties. So for example, here, this rectangle is located, well, it's been translated 1550 pixels uh, left and 1550 pixels up. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to set all set key all dimensions. Now it's in blue, dark blue. It means on this frame, it will always be at this position. And if I go uh, using my timeline here, I can click on this button and that's going to get me to the last frame, all right? Nothing has changed yet. So now I want to move this on uh, to the other side. So I'm going to to change the signs here because I moved 1550 on to the left and to the and to the, the and the top. I think that if I move that to the right and to the bottom, I should be exactly where I want. Well, I am not. 
That is very surprising. Why am I not where I thought I would be? Why? Oh, it didn't. It hadn't validated uh, my my uh, my uh, entry here. Okay, so now we have at frame 120, we told the Nitron we want this triangle rectangle to be at 1550 by minus 1550. There we go. And so, what Natron is going to do, it is going to do its best to interpolate the position of the rectangle between those two keyframes. Alright, so if we go back to uh, using this button, go back to frame 1 and then to click this button and we shall see our rectangle cross the screen. So it's not 60 frames per second because it takes time to render. It's not in real time. I don't know if that's expected. I don't know Natron enough. Uh, but that's what I wanted, wanted to do. Okay. Now, for those movements, you know, um, in, in real life, things don't suddenly go from speed zero to a given a certain uh, speed. So we need like a smooth transition between no speed and full speed and then stop. So we're going to, well, we can use two things. First, we can have a look at the curve editor. And here's what I was uh, saying. So that's the, the position. I think that's X, uh, that's X and that's Y. And, and it go, it doesn't really accelerate. It, it goes from not moving to moving to not moving. Okay, that's not very good for for what we want to do. So we need to change that. Where where why don't I see my keyframes? I think I can do that from here. Can I? It's supposed to show me. It is supposed to show me my keyframes, but it doesn't. It only shows me that. Hmm. Okay, it did work. I don't know why I don't. I can't see. Okay, so what I did is I selected those two keyframes here by clicking or dragging around those keyframes, and then I pressed the H key on my keyboard or then you can you can also go uh, right click on one of those keyframes go to interpolation and then select horizontal interpolation I don't know why it's called like that but see what it does it slowly accelerates and then it slows down and here's what it, uh, what that gives us where's the, the screen it's there okay go back to frame one press play it starts, it accelerates, and then it slows down. Ooh, it's a lot more natural. Okay. It's a white rectangle. It's boring. So let's change that. Double click on rectangle. And here you've got the white color. I'm going to click on the uh, color dialog. And I'm going to... Uh, go here oops not here here uh, and I'm going to type a certain number for the color like for example eight seven a five six six is that I don't remember is it five six six or five five six I think it's five six six I don't remember <laughs> oops all right Let's say it's this one, so that's 135, 165, 86. Okay, go back to Natron. 135, 165, 86. 135, 135, 165, 36. Hmm, it doesn't look, it doesn't look right. Uh, 135, 186, okay. Maybe Natron has a weird way of interpreting colors, but 
3-5-1-6-5-3-6, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's 5-5-6. Five, five, it is 5-5-6. Five, five, it's 8-7-8-5-5-6. But it says 1-3-5-1-6-5-8-6. One, 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 six, five, six. And that's what I did. 1-3-5-1-6-5-8-6. One, one, okay. Weird. Oh. Oh, oh, um, yeah, that's, uh, oh, that's, that's it, one, two, six, five, eight, six, okay, right, we have a nice Ubuntu Mate green rectangle, okay, let's add another rectangle on top of that. But because I'm a lazy person, I don't want to redo that. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to select my rectangle, uh, type Ctrl C, Ctrl V on my keyboard. Same for the transform, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to double click on this rectangle. And over here at the top of this window, you can rename your object. So that's rectangle two. And same for the transform. Double click on the transform and rename it to transform two. Okay. See, they are not connected, those things. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the transform, which is transform two, which hasn't been renamed for some reason. I'm going to select the source um, uh, connector here, and I can drag that to rectangle one. And bam. Rectangle one is connected to transform two. Uh, rectangle two is connected to transform two, but we can't see anything because it is not connected to the viewer. However, if we connect it to the viewer, it's not gonna work because uh, it's not merging everything. It's not doing that properly. So what we need is a merge node. So I'm going to disconnect from the viewer. I'm going to select transform one. I'm going to right click, go to merge, and then select uh, merge, and then select merge. Okay, but here's the trick. Merge will take uh, everything that's on the B connector. Uh, it's I don't know if it's B as in A and B or B as in background, but anything that is connected to the B connector will be shown below everything that is connected to the A connector. And what I actually want is that new rectangle we're gonna do to be on top of this one. So this transform is going to be connected to the B connector, and then this one is going to be connected to the A um, connector of the merge. And then the viewer is going to be connected to the merge. And you can start to see how these things work. So you've got um, elements and each elements are connected to uh, other elements and then it goes like this uh, up to the viewer it's kind of like a layer in GIMP or Photoshop although there are also an, there's also a notion of layer I think in Nitron but I, I haven't uh, figured that out yet so right now we have uh, another rectangle another transform but that's exactly the same transform. So what do we want to do with that? What I would like to do is the first rectangle to appear and then a moment later, the second one to appear. And then I would like to have the second rectangle disappear a moment before the first one. I don't know if that's really clear when I say that, but you're going to see in a moment. So since we have copied the transform, if we go to the uh, dope sheet, we can see this transform is already there. And for some reason now in it, sh it is showing me the correct um, keyframes. But hey, that's uh, live streaming for you. Yeah. It's always uh, strange. Um, okay, what's that? What is that? Why do I have keyframes on frame 22? I don't know. I'm going to remove them because I don't need them. I just select the keyframe and then press delete on my keyboard. 
Right. So now we shall have two rectangles of the same color doing the exact same thing. That's not really interesting. Let's go back to the node graph and change the color of this one. So I double click on that and I'm going to click here and I'm going to use Monica's website that uh, Monica sent me earlier. And I'm, I've chosen this uh, palette over here. Um, why not? I mean, it's, it is a palette. So I'm going to also use this website to convert that number to a more usable thing for Natron. So that's 255, 205, 147. Okay. 255, 155. Uh, I have already forgotten. No, 205, 147. 205, 147. Click OK. And we now have a different color for our rectangle but it's as i said it's right on top of the other one and i well that doesn't make a very good animation does it so we're going to move forward i don't know like uh, uh oops not the correct button i want this button next frame i'm going to move uh how about 20 frames right so we want this to start at frame 20. So we're going to just move the keyframe to frame 20. Okay, so that means I want to uh, that to end 20 frames before the last frame. So I want that to end at frame 100. So let's go back one, a few frames. Oh, I think that's this. Yes, previous increment. So if I click that, I should go back 10 frame. Yes, 110, again, 100. So I can move this keyframe over here. <clears throat> and so what I did here is I, I told Natron, okay, this uh, translate uh, transform two should stay at um, the, its original position. It's, oops, that's not what I want. E that's what I want. It should stay at its original position until frame 20. There we go. And from there, it's going to start interpolating until it reaches the uh, frame 100. And because and because there's less, there are less frames between 20 and 100 than 0 and 120, the orange rectangle goes faster. Uh, that's the one I want. Okay. Let's see that. Uh, rewind and play. Yoo-hoo! Okay, let's have a look at the graph. I think everything should be in order because we did copy... Yes, we did copy the... Um, the, the transform, so we also copied the uh, interpolation, so we have this smooth transition. Yes, thank you, Monica. It is a nice orange. Okay, we want we want another one because you know it's uh, things are always better by three. <laughs> so let's copy this rectangle and this transform uh, again. I'm doing Control C, Control V on my keyboard. Double click on this, rename that rectangle three. I don't know why it's not updating here. Maybe I have to save the project first. So let's let's save that. That's a, always a good idea anyway. So we're going to save that on slash media. Uh, yeah, Nick, yes, that's me. That's my SSD, uh, Natron. <coughs> and let's call that um, Stinger, because I am very creative. I'm building a Stinger, so I call the project Stinger. Okay, let's save that. Uh, well, it didn't change a thing, but anyway. Double click on transform, call that transform three. Okay. Uh, and then connect the source pin to the rectangle and then, ah! We still have 
we have the same problem now. We need to merge that with this here. Okay, let's select our transform, right click, merge, and add a merge node. Since I had the transition, the transform selected, it automatically connected the um, A connector to this transform, which is exactly what we want. And now, uh, oh, by the way, you can zoom, zoom in and zoom out using the mouse wheel, same thing as here. So now I want to disconnect that, so I'm going to grab that and pull on the cable, virtual cable. And I want this input to be the result of the previous merge, and then I want the one input from the viewer to be <coughs> the second merge. Right. But then, same thing as earlier, our uh, rectangle number three has a, the, is at the same position and has the same color as rectangle number two. So let's go back to the color and we will pick this one. And we will transform that to RGB, which is 236151. Let's uh, double click on this rectangle. Click here. <coughs> Oops, that's my uh, crochet pattern. <laughs> that's what I want. 236151, not, not that either. 236, 236151, and 95, 95. Okay. Yes, the Unico palette. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now that you've talked about that, There it is, the Unico. And it's tiny leg. There you go. Let's go back to <laughs> the subject of this stream. All right, I changed the color. Now I need to offset the animation again. So go back to the dog sheet and it's there. Okay, uh, again, I have unnecessary uh, keyframes here, so I'm going to select them and remove them. And <clears throat> I want to push those next keyframe. So we could push 20 frames again, but experience shows that 10 to 15 is plenty enough. So let's try 15. Okay, and we want to do the same thing here. So we, we want to be back 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we want to bring this here. And again, what we're doing is we're delaying the, um, the start of the animation and we're shortening it. So it's going to be faster. Let's see what we've got now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Awesome. I, I, yeah, I find it awesome. But, you know, that's... <laughs> All right, uh, stop that. Now we need the Ubuntu Mate logo because, you know, that's what we're doing here. We're doing some fancy stuff for Ubuntu Mate. Oh. Why? Why? Oh, uh, they aren't exactly at the same place, huh? Why? This transform is now zero minus twenty-five. Okay, and not this one. Why? Why is this one not? It's right in the middle of the animation. There should be. Oh, okay, 1550, and then go this button here goes to the next keyframe, which is keyframe 20, which is where this, there we go. They were not set properly, and because I copied and pasted everything, then 
they, are, they were all wrong. 1550 on both, okay. Uh, this one, yes. And this one, yes. And so at frame 60, they should, ah. There is something wrong. Something. Oh, that's because uh, I think it's because of the acceleration, the interpolation. Well, you know, it it looks okay, so it is probably okay. I'm not gonna spend too much time on on this. Okay. So on our graph editor over there, we're going to. Get a little bit more space in there. Now I want to have the, the Ubuntu Mate logo. So I'm going to right click somewhere on this uh, workspace. I'm going to go to Image and Read. Okay, and I want my, uh, my image, which is here Ubuntu Mate Rondel White. And I've already sized it. It's uh, the size of the um, of the screen here, 1920 by 1080. Okay, uh, if we want to see this thing, we need a merge node. Yes, exactly. So we're going to merge, merge, and then we're going to disconnect this from here. If I can do that, yes. And the B slot will be this. And nothing shows up because it's not connected to the viewer. All right, now we have our beautiful logo, but we only want to see the logo when the color bars are on, on it. So we are going to use a mask. What a mask is, it's like on, like, like in Photoshop or GIMP, it's, um, if there are some colors uh, on 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 the mask, then it will show whatever is uh, it's masking. Okay, I uh, don't know if it's really clear, but it's going to be when I connect the mask on tree to this transform. Now, why would I use this transform? Because the result of this uh, group of node is the green rectangle over here. And that green rectangle will be there first and it will be there last. So by doing that, I'm telling this node, this merge node, only show the portion of the logo that is uh, on top of this red rectangle. So in anywhere the red rectangle is not present, you don't see anything. Let's see. Well, it seems to be working fine. Okay, but now you're going to tell me, but that's uh, there's a lot of black behind this logo, this uh, stinger. Well, actually, if you go there on your on the top of your viewer, on this uh, checkered icon, it will actually show you a checkered board where your image is transparent. So we can see that it's actually transparent. So and if it, it, on, on, in OBS, when we're going to transform that into a Stinger transition, it will show the source behind, then it will cover the source, and then it will show this, reveal the source again. All right, let's see what we have here. So it's gonna take a little time to compute that. Well, that looks awesome. I may say so myself. And there we go. At a reasonable speed. Not not the real speed, but not bad for a a what? A 30 minute uh, 30 minute demonstration. Okay. I would like to see something I have seen somewhere that I was able to 
add some motion blur. Is it... Uh, uh, yes, motion blur. So we could, we could, if we wanted, add some motion blur. What motion blur does, it's, uh, it's going to... I believe it's going to take a lot of time to compute. Ah, oh, not a lot. But you can see here at the, the, the border, right here at the border, it's kind of blurry. So it's kind of like, it's, uh, it, 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 there's a movement, movement. Uh, I don't know how to explain that, but it, it's, it gives a little more uh, realism to the animation. I, I'm not sure it's useful for a stinger transition on OBS, but it doesn't seem to take a lot more. Ah, I guess if I add motion blur to my three transformation, it's going too fast. We're not going to see it anyway, so I'm going to remove that. Let's remove the motion blur. There we go. Okay. Right. So. We have an, our animation in Natron. That's very basic. I'm going to do another stream another day um, for a stinger transition with the alpha, how is, how is it called? Uh, alpha thingy, where, where you can have half of the scene uh, on, on one part of the screen and half of the scene on another part. Uh, it's alpha blending transition or something like that. Um, so this transition will be used in such a way that you we're going to to tell OBS okay start the transition and after one second switch the scenes so how can we do that well we need to export this as a video format that um, OBS can use we could we could render a video straight from Natron but I have found that it's cumbersome to find the right settings to export a video with an alpha channel so transparency so what we're going to do instead we're going to export a series of pngs uh, png png file format support uh, alpha channels or transparency so that we, we should be okay and then we're going to <coughs> uh, use those images with ffmpeg to produce a webm video so let's go to image, right. Okay, as soon as we add this node, it asks us where we want to store our um, our image. So Natron gives us uh, on on this uh, left hand side a few uh, a few directory. One is called project, which is where you saved your project which is very handy because you don't have to look for it. It's right there. It's called project. All right. <coughs> We're going to create a new folder images because we want to have all our images in this at the same place. And now we're going to use a trick. We're going to call the, our file dash uh, pound 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 dot PNG. And what that tells it, it tells nature we are Yes, we do need three digits. It tells Natron, okay, you're going to generate an image sequence, which is what we have selected here. Sequence, and not video file. And uh, replace that by the frame number. Okay, so let's hit save. All right, so we have a new write node over here, but it's connected to nothing. So let's connect it to the merge three node, okay. And uh, everything seems to be okay by default. So let's click render. And it starts rendering the animation. It's gonna take about 30 seconds to, to compute that. Um, just uh, for information, I, I have a problem with uh, Natron. If I let it decide how many threads it wants, it crashes. So if you happen to follow this uh, and try to do the reproduce this example and your Natron instance is crashing, go to Edit, Preferences, then you go to Threading, and here if you over the mouth, over this uh, 
this box. It's going to tell you the ideal thread count for this hardware is six. So I did uh, type six in there and number of parallel renders I put two. Um, I don't know if putting more would speed up the the process. I haven't tried yet. Uh, what I know if uh, if I like leave zero and zero in those two boxes, and Natron crashes. So uh, have a look at that if yours is also crashing. Well, it's done. So let's go and see with our terminal. We have a images folder and we have 120 images. Um, let's see. Let's try and see. I'm going to bring the file uh, manager explorer thingy. And we have our 120 images here. Neat. All right. Let's merge that. So ffmpeg dash r 60 fps dash e the i. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mixing French and English. Uh, images uh, percent 3d I think dot png. And we want stinger dot webm. All right, it's doing stuff. It is doing stuff. It's going to produce a video. It did produce a video. So let's go back here. And we have our stinger.webm. Let's click on that. And we have a stinger. Okay. How can I show you that in OBS? Well, I guess we're going to have to... We're going to have to go to OBS. I'm going to have to bring that here and we're going to go to the inception mode because I don't have two OBSs. Well, I guess I could run another one, but, but let's do that live. Or maybe I can try and run another one. I should have prepared for that. Can I run a multiple bases instance? I can. I can do that. Yes. Which one is this one? Okay, let's create a new scene collection. Stream test. Okay. Uh, can you still see me, hear me? Yes, I think you can. Let's put OBS uh, like that. Um, I have lost the Twitch chat. There it is. Okay, so that's OBS. Let's, uh, we have a scene. Okay, uh, let's uh, create, I don't know, uh, a color source. Okay. And we're going to select a nice green. Okay, and let's create another scene, scene two. And let's create a another color source. And let's pick a nice, uh, oops, a nice uh, orange. Right, okay. Right, we've got two scenes, green and orange. Not very different, not very interesting, but we don't really care about that. We're going to go now to the scene transitions over here. Click on the cogwheel here. And no, not on the cogwheel, on the uh, combo box and go to add stinger. Okay. Well, we're going to call it uh, stream stinger. Why not? Okay, video file. Let's browse and go to our SSD Natron and pick Stinger WebM. All right, uh, transition point, time in milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds, and I think that's it. Let's click preview. Yeah. And now if we go from the green screen, green scene to the orange scene, we are using our Stinger transition. It works perfectly. I think we can 
we could see that even better if that was like purple and and this one was something like a color that isn't in the in the stinger let's say blue uh okay okay and here we can see transition yeehaw it is working so that's it uh so yeah um netron is a bit complex to apprehend the first time you see that but it's really it's really logical and it's really a, a question of knowing what nodes are available and what they are doing i don't know anything about i don't know i think 80 90 percent of those nodes i have only discovered recently Na natron and so yeah it, i mean when you arrived here it can be a little bit intimidated but really what you need to know is that you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel click uh, right click anywhere on this workspace to get the menu here and just you know play with the nodes here and there's a lot of documentation online so you can you can do lots of stuff like uh, color correction uh, filter all kinds of filter blurry stuff like that um, transformations and and there's this um, community stuff and there's uh, <laughs> there's one filter that is called shadow toy right if you add a shadow toy it's here uh, it's really it doesn't do a lot but if you go online to shader shader toy shadow toy dot com then you have a lot of predefined shaders that people are um, sharing online and then you can use whatever they provided and that that so that if you copy that it's really complex i don't understand anything of <coughs> what that means but what i know if, if is if i copy that to my natron uh, filter i'm going to have this which is awesome <clears throat> so uh, one day I, I will do another stream about shadow toy because it is really great right so that's it that's a uh, quick stream uh, kind of impromptu uh, so I did this uh, stinger earlier this afternoon and I asked in the uh, uh, Ubuntu Mate discord server if anyone would be interested and uh, Monica and Bigfoot said yeah so there we go I did the, the live stream this is going to be archived on YouTube so if you're watching that on YouTube it was originally um, streamed on Twitch uh, <laughs> Wimpy is still gonna punch that <laughs> uh, is it not possible to export a WebM file with the alpha channel di directly pro gamer well yeah it's supposed to be doable i i had trouble doing that um finding the right settings uh for that uh, i i i had mixed results and the best results i had was to export a series of png or tiffs if you don't want to compress it although pngs are okay and it's a two second animation that's very fast so even if there are some artifacts to we would probably not see them uh, so exporting a series of uh, pngs and then uh, um, um, patching them multiplexing them i don't know how to say that uh, transforming this image sequence into video with ffmpeg is actually the uh, what gives the best results um, that's what i found online too people say yeah the best thing the best way to do that easiest and not the fastest, but really easiest way to do that is to export uh, PNGs or TIFFs and then um, multiplex that with FFmpeg. So there you go. Uh, Netron is really, really great. Uh, it it might be 
too big for just this kind of stinger. I'm sure you can do that in maybe maybe uh, open shots can do that or uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve pro can probably do that. Uh, but I, the more I use Natron, the more I like it. Uh, now that I found that I I, I can set, um, tweak the, those settings and it doesn't crash anymore, uh, it's it's really great. Um, I think it's not really using my GPU, which it should, uh, but I don't know why it's, it doesn't seem to, to use it. I'm going to have to have a look at that because, uh, yeah, it took about 25 to 30 seconds to generate, to render a two second sequence. So imagine you have like a 30 minute thing. Uh, well, I guess you wouldn't do a 30 minute thing with a PC like mine, so. Yes, big pod, alpha channel is problematic in video editors and exports. Yes, so that's why they really, they, it's really easy with uh, PNGs, you just, Add the uh, right node, uh, this one. You really add this right node here. Double click on that, say PNG here, and all the defaults are okay. Click render and it will uh, render the, uh, the alpha channel. Make sure that uh, you have input pre-multiplied, uh, frame range, project frame range. And that's it. It's gonna, but it's it is the default anyway. So just make sure you have the defaults here, and that's it. You don't even have to export that to a, to an SSD because it's it spends more time rendering the images than writing them. So yeah, yeah, big pod. Sometimes animation takes seconds per frame on, on GPU. Yeah. When you do professional, you know, 4K photorealism uh, compositing with lots of of layers and color correction and and motion blur and stuff like that, usually motion blur is added uh, really at the end because it does take so much time to compute. You need to be sure that your animation is okay before you add the motion blur. Well. That's it for this stream. Uh, it's getting a bit late here. It was a late stream uh, because I had other stuff before that. Uh, thank you, Big Pad. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Programmer, for joining me live on Twitch. And I'm going to export this video to YouTube uh, so that it stays there for posterity. Have a good uh night evening afternoon whatever it is in your part of the world i will be back uh next uh thursday with uh, another uh, ubuntu mate software boutique stream that i'm probably gonna do on twitch and not on youtube uh it's gonna be archived on youtube but i'm going to do that on twitch and maybe this weekend if i have time i will do the second uh Stinger transition stream, but this time with the uh, the, alt, the the mate, the track mate, uh, track mat, not mate, mat, the track mat uh, thing, so that uh, we can see uh, the difference between this and the other one. All right, thank you everybody. Take care of yourselves and see you soon. Bye bye.